good audio matters, but after that, it's all about lighting. I'd even go as far as to say that lighting matters far more than any other set consideration. Why? Well, stick around after this short break for all the details. But first, please do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter, but most importantly, please subscribe to this channel. It doesn't cost you anything. It really does help this channel grow, and it helps keep you up to date on the latest camera gear news and rumors. There's nothing worse than poor audio, and you know what I'm talking about. Have you ever started watching a video and it's got crackling, it's got some heavy distortion where you can't quite hear what's going on? Or worse, and this has got to be the worst, and I'm going to warn you here, it's going to send shivers down your back, but it's kind of like fingernails down a chalkboard it's when you get that really, really bad wind noise distortion. Lighting matters. I've said this time and time again. It, it, it's one of the most fundamental things when you're shooting. But after taking care of audio, if you want your work to get noticed, if you want to get taken seriously, then good effective lighting really matters. Lighting matters more than the camera you have, more than the lens. Lighting communicates mood, intent, and emotion. It's fundamental to cinema filmmaking, videography, and even rinky-dink YouTube channels like this one here. When I started out four years ago, lighting, well, was pretty bad. Now I had spent some money. I bought four Godox lead panel lights, and um, yeah, I didn't know how to use them. But I reached out to a friend of mine, Peter Gregg, and he said, okay, Simon, here's what you want to do. You need to have a key light, which is what I have right here, and this is a terrific light. It's only 80 watts, but I'm in a very low light situation in the studio. And then he said, okay, once you've got your key light dialed in, you need a fill light. And so that's, I've got a fill light right here. And it's not set to the same brightness so that one side of my face has a slightly different uh, lighting. Again, for emotion, for mood, you see this a lot. Unless you're doing corporate videos, you want one side of the person's face to be a little bit darker than the other side. And of course, the next thing he helped me set up was the positioning of the top light right here, this puts light down on the top of me, really sets me apart from the background. And so those were based on the lights that I had at the time. And I had another mentor who really helped me dial in the brightness here. Um, I used to have this Godox panel at around 25% fully lit. And now I've got it to where it's at the lowest possible setting. And other than like one inch at the bottom, I've got paper covering it off, black paper. So it's only letting out a very little bit of light. So I'm not getting this huge glare off my forehead. So we got all that taken care of. We got the lighting right on my face. We got the exposure correct, but things were still a little bit bland. And I just, I didn't know what to do. I was still new to this and I'm learning everything as I go, as I started this channel. The reason why I chose Ordinary Filmmaker is because I'm like you, I'm starting out, I'm new at this. I'm not a Steven Spielberg. I'm not even a Steven Spielberg wannabe. I mean, how, arrogant would that be? Look at his success and to even imagine that I could get to that level. But then some three years ago, the date actually eludes me, Yolanzi reached out to me and asked me, hey, would you like to review some of our RGB lights? Um, these guys right here. This used to be operating at the bottom of my set here, but I've got the new ones, the VL RGB Pro, which I'll talk about shortly. I've been using these for the better part of three years, for the better part of a thousand videos in the studio here, upst upstairs in Studio B, and also for my run and gun work, because while this one is set to a, a, a nice cool blue, it, well, it's easier to show it this way, because if I show it here, it's gonna show up as white. Very soft power. I've only got it set to, what, 35, 38%, but you can also set it to, to white. And so I'll put it on top of the camera if I'm shooting in a forest in low light situation, and I want my subject to just pop a little bit from the background. These guys are perfect. I mean, it's got it built right in. It's got a little shoe here that I just put into the camera. Now the new ones, well, they have a shoe that you can attach to it so you can either have the shoe or not. But I've been using these for the better part of three years. I haven't had a single issue with them. They just keep going and going and going. After I shoot each video, I go upstairs, I put them in their charging stations and they're good to go for the next video. However, um, you know, I had a failure on my studio last week, which caused me a whole lot of issues. I'll talk about it in a future update. But w one thing it kind of taught me is, well, okay, so what else can go? What else can fail? And my lighting, key light, fill light, I've got backups. I do. But then I thought, well, wait a minute. Okay, so these guys here, I don't have a backup to. And I know what you're thinking. Okay, so this sounds a little silly. They're just, they're just accent lights. They don't really mean make much of a difference, do they? All right, well, let's turn them off and have a look-see and see the difference. So here we go. 
that doesn't look very good, does it? Sure, I'm separated from the background, but it's kind of boring. It's kind of like when you wake up in the morning and it's just before the sun comes up. Everything is dark and dreary and you really don't have much color perception. And that's kind of how things look here. So can you imagine if I was shooting and all of a sudden one of these lights failed, they died, they, they gave up the ghost, or more likely, uh, once again, I dropped them. And I'm dropping these things all the time. The amount of times I've actually dropped these guys from about three or four feet on a hardwood floor and they still work, they still keep going, I know that one time I'm going to do it and they're going to stop working. And while it won't look this bad, it does. I've actually shot a video where I forgot to turn on a few lights and had to reshoot it because it's annoying. It's kind of like me doing a video here and having a fly on my nose. What are you going to notice? Me and what I'm talking about or the fly on my nose? And again, what I want to point out here is the importance of lighting, the type of lights you have, where they're positioned, how you're exposed, the depth from or the position of where you're at to where the lights are and to where, and even how you have the camera set up to the depth of field and how the strength of those lights are compared to other lights really makes a big difference. But now I want to talk to you about the new Ulanzi VL49 RGB Pros. They have a longer battery life of 2500 milliamp hours versus 2000 milliamp hours on the old ones. While we can set the exact same color on the Pro, which is why this setting looks exactly the same as all my previous videos, we have a little bit more greater control so I can adjust the saturation separately. I can dial up or down the saturation from a value of 0 to 100. And all these guys here to match the old ones, I dial the saturation all the way up to 100. And that's why this set here doesn't look any different to my previous set. So I'm using these new lights, the Ulanzi VL Pro or the VL RGB Pro. They're a little bit more expensive. They're $25 versus $20 for the old ones. And I got to say, they certainly feel a whole lot more solid. They feel durable. They feel well built. And while how something feels and looks doesn't tell you about its longevity, I'm still using these old guys. I'm not going to throw them out. I'm going to take them. They're going to be used upstairs solely for Studio B or for when I do run and gun work. But now at least I have a backup. I've got newer lights, so the battery's there quicker. Or the battery isn't there quicker. That doesn't make any sense. What I'm trying to say is the battery's all new, so they're going to recharge quicker. And uh, there's a less chance of something going wrong. But if something does go wrong now, at least I've got some backups. But there's more. Yulanzi also released the LT-003. Not exactly the most catchy name, but this light is bigger and provides 8,000 milliamp hours versus the 2,500 milliamp hours on the VL49 RGB Pro. And it's definitely brighter at 2,100 lux. You know, I've been doing reviews for the better part of four years, and with that comes experience. And because I've already, well, worked with Ulanzi in the past, and when I see them again, and I know that they worked well, that I haven't had any issues. And when I constantly drop them, and I, I, I'm a bit of a klutz, when I drop them on <laughs> in the floor here in Studio B, it's carpeted, so I'm not really worried. But when I drop them upstairs onto hardwood three or four feet down, I'm just like, I get mad. I swear. It's like, come on. Why are you being such a dumb klutz? And thankfully, they haven't broken. So I know these old ones, they, they really last. Uh, they're, they're very reliable. They work out in the cold. They work out in the heat. Uh, most of their life, I've had them here in the studio or upstairs in Studio B. But... I'm really impressed with them, and for the price, I mean, $20 for these ones, and you can still find the old uh, RGB, Yulanzi RGB lights, the square lights, these ones here. But one thing I didn't mention is that this time around, Yulanzi didn't reach out to me because I, I don't know if I alluded to this in the beginning of the video, but uh, when I was worried about lights failing or me dropping them and breaking them, because after you get to a certain point, when you start to have one failure on your, uh, a part, on your studio and your company, you start to think of business continuity and redundancy in other parts. So in lighting for the, uh, the key light and the fill light, I was covered for this light here. I've got like three of these as a backup. But I realized, you know, these lights, these accent lights, I call them accent lights, the Yulanzi RGB Pro and the, um, the LT-003, they really, really step up the set. They really make the background look good. They separate me from the background. I really like the look of them. And even if just one of them fails, things don't look right. Things look a little strange. So I actually started looking. I was going to buy one of these, but when I did a search, I noticed, hey, wait a minute. They've got some new ones. So I reached out to them. I said, look, I'm interested in, I was interested in buying some backup lights for my set in case, in case some failed, but 
you know, I'd be interested in doing another review video for you three years out talking about how the existing lights, the RGB lights, have worked for this channel, but then talk about some of the new ones as I completely refresh everything. Because one thing I think is very important to do on this channel is when I review something, is not just to review it and then flip it off and sell it, it's to actually use it day in and day out. The Canon EOS R5, the Ninja 5, the different lights that I've got here, the Angelbird storage media that I test and that I use, I use them all the time. So when you see a video of mine where I talk about products, you can ask me about them. The Tascam DR10L, and no, I don't have the Pro yet because... In my studio settings, I don't have to worry about 32-bit because I'm always talking at a specific level. Although the ability to get the content off the unit quicker without having to take the card out, um, if that's something it can do, then probably I'll get the DR10L Pro. But that's the unique thing about my channel. If you see a review and you want to know, hey, how is this working for you? Are you still using it? I can say yes, after a year, two years, three years, or four years, yeah, I'm, I'm using this and it still works. I still have my Canon 70D. It's behind me. After, what, 10 years, I still use it. My son's using it for his channel, Planet Liam. So I, I think that's really important. I, I can't stand... And I do get offers from companies saying, hey, we'll loan you this for a week or two or a couple of days. And I usually turn those down because a week or two isn't enough to know what it's like to live with something day in and day out. And you all know this from... Your relationships, from gear you have, your car, you can do a test drive, and guess what? It's great, right? The car is great, it's perfect, you love it. You take it home, you drive it, and you find out, you know, the seat isn't as comfortable as you thought, or the ride isn't as good as you thought, the fuel efficiency isn't as good as you thought. Or your relationship, you get those butterflies, you fall in love, everything's great. And then after you move in together, or after a month, you realize, you know what? Maybe it's me, maybe it's the other person, but, you know, I don't feel that connection anymore. So that's why I think it's very important to review these things day in and day out. So if you have any questions regarding the Alonzi lights, the old RGB lights, or the new VL RGB Pro, or the LT003, or even the, I'm using a Colbert CL100 here. Uh, this is just a regular Henry's light, and I'm using the Godox light at the top. Any questions in any way whatsoever, go ahead and post them in the comment section down below. And if you want to stay up to date on all the latest camera gear news and rumors, and you don't want to miss another review, then please go ahead and subscribe but also choose all notifications. And I, I, I'll be honest with you, it really makes a huge difference to this channel. It's what gets this channel noticed and is the reason why companies are willing to send me a whole bunch of lights to refresh my setup so I can do a review. And if you want to stay up to date on all the minor news and rumors, then go ahead and follow me on Twitter at this address here. But in terms of pricing information, that stuff I love to tweet out as well. There's a huge amount of deals on right now, and including if you want to purchase these lights here, the VL Pro, I've got the links in the description down below. But if you're looking for deals on camera gear, such as the Canon EOS R5, well, boy, is that on sale. $500 off, and they're also willing to throw in a free battery grip at B&H and Adorama. And that's not all. The r 3s on sale, $500 off. $500 off the Panasonic S1H, the Nikon Z6 Mark II, Z7 Mark II, $300 and $400 off, respectively. Sony's got up to $700 off certain package deals, the A7 III, as well as the 24-70 F4. I can go on right now. If you're looking at buying a camera, a lot is on sale. And yes, when you see a lot on sale, you can expect that something new is about to come out. The Canon EOS R5 Mark II, um, stick with us. We're going to have new information coming out over the next couple of weeks. Panasonic, I'm expecting we're supposed to be getting an announcement this fall, they've been way too quiet. It's past the four-year mark for an S1, S1H refresh. And of course, Nikon, the Z6 Mark III, Z7 Mark III, Sony A9 III. There's an awful lot supposed to be coming out, so subscribe. Uh, choose all notifications, but uh, it's Friday. No, it's Saturday morning here. I'm losing content. I don't normally get up at 5 o'clock on a Saturday, but um, yeah, no, I got some news this morning, so um, yeah, we'll just have to waste. Anyhow, Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great weekend, and we'll see you again soon. And please subscribe. Go on, just click the button there. I know it's on. I look. I know on the. T if you're watching on a TV, it's it's a pain. But if you could do it, I'd be really grateful. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.